ever thought to yourself that gods in many religions seem pretty messed up? Us too! And that is exactly why today we are looking at some examples of some horrific behavior as seen in ancient mythology. Let's dive right in, bumblebees. Here are the top 10 scandalous acts performed by ancient gods. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Hades. Hades is the king of the underworld and the god of the dead, and I'm not sure if it gets any darker than that. It was believed that just by speaking his name, he would have the power to bring you to the underworld, so people tried to avoid his name like it it was Voldemort. Hades was sure to never let any souls that entered the underworld escape, and he would punish anyone who tried, or anyone who tried to save someone in the underworld. One of his darkest myths is in reference to the time he kidnapped Persephone. He opened up the earth where she was picking flowers, and he kept her in the underworld. Persephone's mother, Demeter, was of course really unhappy about this, and did everything she could to get her back. Hades finally agrees to let her go, but of course there's always a twist with these guys. He gives her a little pomegranate seed as a parting gift, which she eats. Little does she know, if you eat food from the underworld, it binds you to it. So now she is bound to Hades, and basically the story ends off with her being allowed to live a few months of the year on Earth, but the rest of the time she is stuck in the underworld. So yeah, Hades is just out there kidnapping people, which is just really super uncool. In our number 9 spot today, we have Loki. Loki is a Nordic god, and he is quite the little trickster, as he basically deceived his way into becoming a deity. Basically, there is a place called Asgard, and when that was being built by Odin, who is the king of gods, Loki came and offered to help out with the build. To make a long story short, basically there was a giant helping with the build, and Loki made a special deal with him. If the giant finished the build by a certain time, he would be owed the sun, the moon, and the goddess Freya. Odin obviously didn't want to give these things over, but Loki assured him that the giant wouldn't be able to complete the build by that day. What Loki he didn't know is that the giant had a stallion who was helping him, and he was on track to finish the build and win this deal. That's when Loki decided to transform himself into a mare. In mare form, he went over and wooed this stallion and led him off into the woods. In the woods, one thing led to another. You know, and Loki, in mere form, ended up pregnant. After this, he gave birth to an eight legged spider horse for some reason that I do not know, and then he gave this weird baby spider horse to Odin as a gift, and apparently that is how he became a god. But also, this led to the giant being killed by Thor, so the story is both weird and very messed up. In our number eight spot today, we have Huitzilopochtli. Huitzilopochtli is a god in the Aztec religion, and he is the god of the sun, but also of war and human sacrifice. His origin story is a pretty wild one. So his mother is Coatlicue, and she is very important. She already had other fully grown children when she was impregnated with him. Her grown children were the female deity Coatlshaki and her 400 brothers. All of these children were really mad at how she became pregnant again, and they began conspiring to kill her, which is absolutely nuts. This is when Huitzilopochtli burst from his mother's womb in full armor and he was also fully grown. He knew about the conspiring and he fought his brothers and sisters literally right after being born. He then beheaded his sister and threw her body off the mountaintop, which is honestly I don't know, kind of crazy, kind of dark. After this, he chased his brothers around and they became scattered all throughout the sky. This is why he is seen as the sun, his sister the moon, and his brothers are the stars. In our number seven spot today, we have Amit. Amit is an ancient Egyptian goddess with the head of a crocodile, the body of a lion or leopard, and the bottom of a hippopotamus. The name Amit means eater of the damned or devourer of the dead, and that is honestly pretty much exactly what she is. She is greatly feared and for good reason. She lives near the scales of justice in Duat, which is the Egyptian underworld. This is where she does her work. After a person dies, their heart is weighed on the scales against the feather of truth. If the heart was light enough, the person would be allowed to pass to the afterlife, but Ahmed is always waiting for those whose hearts are heavy. If a person's heart was too heavy and unbalanced the scale, then Ahmed would eat the heart and they would be denied entry to the afterlife. It is said that the 
the souls of those who were denied were destined to be restless forever. In our number 6 spot today we have Apollo. Apollo is the Greek god who is the son of Zeus and at a first glance he seems like a pretty likeable guy, but he's done some extremely questionable things. You know what they say, like father like son, and in the case of Apollo that is pretty accurate considering he has quite a temper. Apollo has been known to punish people with illness and plague, which is very dark. During the Trojan War, Apollo shot arrows that had been infected with the plague into a Greek camp. There's also another story about him where he was rejected by Cassandra, who was the daughter of King Priam and Queen Hecuba of Troy, so he decided to punish her. He gave her the ability to see the future, but only the tragedies that the future holds. And the worst part, if she told anyone, no one would believe her. In our number 5 spot today we have Berstuk. Berstuk is a Wendish evil god of the forest and he is known for his trickery. He is often described as being half man and half goat, but there are some sources which claim he is actually a shadow and doesn't have a human form at all and instead is more of a spirit of the woods. So here's what dark thing he's got going on. He likes to trick wanderers of the forest into getting lost. Yep, it's just literally a full on nightmare. He hangs out in the dark depths of the forest waiting for the moment to strike. Once a wanderer stumbles across his path, he'll play tricks where he changes the path in the woods, or he'll whisper in their ears to frighten them like it's the chamber of secrets, or he'll lay branches in their way so they'll trip and fall. And he does this all simply because he enjoys the suffering of others. Many of the other gods on this list also do some good things, but I couldn't find any happy or nice stories about this one. In our number 4 spot today we have Izanami and Izanagi. This is kind of like a 2 for 1 deal because both of these people play a very big role in this story. Izanami no Mikoto comes to us from Japanese mythology and her name means she who invites. She is the goddess of both creation and death and she is the former wife of the god Izanagi no Mikoto. So it's a bit of a long story but basically at one point she dies. That's really all you need to know about that. This of course upsets her husband, so he goes to the land of the dead to find her. Once he does, he can't quite see her because I guess the visibility isn't great in the underworld. He then goes to take her home with him, but she says she can't leave because she has already eaten the food of the underworld, which has made her one with the dead. It's a common theme, I guess, in different religions. Later, when she's sleeping, he takes a torch up to her face and sees that she is no longer beautiful, but has rotting flesh with maggots, like as if she's like a zombie. At this point he runs the heck away because she woke up and is now trying to chase him down with her gross zombie face. He ends up making it all the way to the entrance to the world of the dead and he pushes a huge boulder in front of it that now separates the world of the dead from the world of the living, but it also sadly separates him from his wife. Of course she is mad at everything that just happened, even though she was acting pretty weird and is also dead. So she swears that she will kill 1000 living people every day because he left her there, and to this he replies that he will offer 1500. I mean, can we blame him? In our number 3 spot today we have Firo. Firo comes from Maori mythology and he is the lord of darkness and the embodiment of evil. He of course needs a home to match his dark persona so he resides in the underworld. He is responsible for all illness of people and some tribes believe that when people die, they descend into the underworld where Firo eats them and for each body he consumes he gains more strength and eventually he may grow powerful enough to break free from the underworld. If he is able able to do this then he will be able to come to the surface and devour everyone and everything. This is why the people who followed this mythology believe so strongly in cremation, because he cannot gain strength from ashes. Firo lives in what is called the house of death and it is a dark creepy cave that preserves all things evil like black magic and the personifications of illness and disease. I don't know about you guys, but personally I hope Firo stays in his little cave safe and sound in the underworld because I don't want any part in whatever he's got going on. In our number 2 spot today we have Guayota. Guayota is a deity that comes from the Guanche mythology of Tenerife. He is actually the primary dark god in this mythology and plays a very integral role in the story. He is represented as a black dog and also always had other black dogs around him that were actually demons. According to the legend he lived inside the Teta volcano as it was a gateway to the underworld. At some point he actually kidnapped Magek who is the god of the sun and 
shut them up in a volcano so as to throw the world into darkness. After humans prayed to their supreme god Akamen, he went and saved Magek and locked Guayota up inside the volcano instead. I think it's safe to say that a god who steals the sun and locks it away definitely needs to be hidden inside of a volcano. For sure the best place for them. In our number one spot today we have Lamashtu. Lamashtu is a demon, monster, malevolent goddess or demigoddess who comes from Mesopotamian mythology and she certainly is terrible. Her name means she who erases and this is because she would prey on women during childbirth and wait for them to be breastfeeding their new baby so that she could kidnap it and eat its flesh. I honestly don't know if it gets any darker than that. She was also known to disturb sleep and cause nightmares as one of her less worse qualities, but she would also be known to harm the environment, bound the muscles of men, and would bring sickness and disease. Mothers who were expecting children would wear an amulet that depicted her in order to protect their pregnancy from her. Some people would even leave offerings to keep her appeased, which would always be small feminine objects. Some women would even go as far as to summon Pazuzu, son of Hanbi, the demon god, in order to protect them from Lamashtu's evil, as Pazuzu was her one weakness. Pazuzu protected them either because he felt bad for the expectant mothers, or because he simply just hated Lamashtu. Either way, at least he was there to help instead of harm. There were some cultures where Lamashtu was regarded as a guardian, but that definitely was not the case for all. Alright guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. If a part two is in your deepest desires, let us know down below in the comments. Alright, don't forget to subscribe to The Hive, and uh, yeah, that's it. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlovsky. I'll see you again soon. Goodbye!